So it is beneficial, but not considered essential. However, that might be changing. I'm just saying. First off, I want to start off by saying you guys are awesome. I love you. And I love you because you guys ask questions that I myself love researching. So the question on the Facebook group page was, Ashley, can you please do a video on silica? I'm here to answer whether or not silica addition to your potting soil, whether it's house plants or garden plants, it does not matter. It affects both. If it will make a difference in your plant's health. Just one clarifying bit here is that I'm going to use silica as my language throughout this video so I can communicate directly to the plant community that uses the language silica. But the true element in this discussion is silicone specifically. So just keep that in mind. Some of you I know are super nerdy and will correct me in the comments on that. I'm aware of that being the situation. I want to talk the same language as everyone else. So it is silica for this video. So I actually trudge through the scientific literature in my spare time because yes, I am that way. Red hair makes you nuts. And so I do that in my spare time. <laughs> I read scientific journals. I take that and I digest it all down into usable content for you if you have houseplants or a garden. But before we get started, first off, I want you to hit that subscribe button. And I also want you to comment down below what plant hack you want me to review with science. Okay, so silica, what is it? It's incredibly valuable to plants. It can help a plant put on board biomass, whether that's in the roots, the stems, the leaves, the flowers, you name it. It does increase biomass in our plants. The second thing it does is it actually makes a plant more resistant to abiotic and biotic factors. Ashley, what the heck does that mean? All that means is it makes it more resistant to living and non-living stressors, meaning living stressors such as grasshoppers or thrips or mealybugs or disease, fungus, bacteria, you name it. The non-living factors being heat or drought conditions, maybe mechanical manipulations of some sort, that sort of thing. So there are different forms of silica you can apply to your soil. There's calcium silicate, magnesium silicate, potassium silicate. But ultimately speaking, the only form of silica that your plant takes up is salicylic acid or monosalicylic acid. And silica is not silicone. Do not mix these two up. They are completely different. So silica has never been referenced as a material that is essential for plant nutrient uptake, it has always been referenced to as beneficial nutrient, meaning it's nice if it's present in the soil for uptake, but we don't deem it make it or break it for plant growth or hardiness or performance. So if you watched my series on the 17 essential plant nutrients, you'll already know that silica did not make the cut because it doesn't it doesn't fall in the category of the 17 essentials. So it is beneficial, but not considered essential. However, that might be changing. I'm just saying. So silica, when it is uptaken by plants, moves through our xylem and it gets deposited between the cuticle and the anterior spaces. So I'm gonna, cause I, I, I reworded that like five times. That's why there was an awkward cut there likely. Uh, I'll put a graph here and I'll put an arrow <laughs> kind of to where that would be deposited. Uh, so you can get an idea of where it would go in your plant. But this is the reason why we say it helps with biomass accumulation is because of this space in which it gets deposited once it is uptaken. So the uptake of silica I mean, I found this really cool when I was looking through studies, but the uh, uptake of silica is actually what makes plant fossils. So prehistoric plant fossils that you find or that archeologists find, they are directly caused by the volume of silica that that plant uptook. So plants that uptake more of this stuff tend to fossilize. So that's kind of cool. Or they make up, they all, well, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Here's the crazy part. And this is where the controversy or the debate between scientists starts. Silica is the highest, has the highest concentration on earth. Like out of all the minerals, there is a crap load of silica. 30% of your soil is silica. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's sand, silt or clay, 30% of that is silica. The problem is that a lot of that silica is actually caught in or tied in or 
stuck in the mosaic that we call the soil solution. So there are pH ranges that release silica availability in the soil. So some soils with specific pHs may have higher or lower levels of silica available to the plant. But ultimately speaking, a lot of that 30% is bound up and not plant available, which is where we end up with silica deficiency deficiencies. So it's not deficient in the sense of like how much volume is there. It's deficient in the sense that it's not available to the plant. The only time I would say for sure that a soil is deficient in silica is your gall darn homemade potting soil. I'm not going to say too much. I'm gonna, no, I, no hate. You're allowed to be your own scientist. But a lot of these uh, homemade plant potting soils have like just compost and then peat or coconut coir, whatever the case is, and then some sort of like pumice or co uh, coconut husk, whatever. Generally speaking, you're missing lime, which is super important to those DIY potting soil mixes. And then you're, you're missing a lot of micro and macronutrients, essential or not beneficial, such as silica. And that is why I find the houseplant community is notorious for being like, oh, I added this and it made a big difference. Well, you added that and you observationally saw a big difference because your potting soil to begin with was not at all in the realm of where it needed to be. Unless you are like an absolute pro and you know what you're doing, please just go buy the potting soil. There is medium scientists, like scientists that literally dedicate their lives to making potting soil medium. These companies do not just throw this stuff together. Get a professional mix, that's my number one recommendation, and uh, don't like, use it the way it's supposed to be used. If you wanna do DIY, go ahead. But if you have plant problems or like issues with your plants or lackluster growth, skip the DIY, go to a professional mix, less gnats, less disease, less pests, and a heck of a lot more nutrient uptake. So yes, potting soils, classically speaking, I would say would be deficient in silica, along with probably a crap load of other stuff. Okay, so we know that silica is not considered essential, but it is considered beneficial. We know from plant studies, nutrient ups take studies, that silica is important because it does help with biomass increase through depositing between the cuticle and the intercellular layer. We also know that this almost buffer from the cuticle to the inner workings of the plant can help that plant overcome biotic or abiotic stressors. That would be the reason for that perceived benefit we see. We also know that it's deficient. And by deficient, we mean that it's, we don't mean that it's not there. It's very much so there. The problem is that it is not available to plants in our soil due to the just general chemistry of physical properties of our soil. The question becomes, what does the studies show when silica was added in excess or was added through a liquid formula? This is very specific and this is like a very common thing I saw throughout. Plants that had like a powdered or a granular form of silicone or silica, silicone, oh my goodness, uh, silica added to the soil these ones, uh, we tended to see benefits, but not in the same capacity of which we would see with a liquid. So I talked about soil solution at great length in, in my channel before, but soil solution simply is referencing your soil as a whole when it's dry versus your soil as a whole when it's wet. So your soil Think of it not as like different components, water and soil and air. What you wanna think of it as is a solution, like a smoothie. So a smoothie has berries and maybe spinach and whey powder and milk, but you would never be able to pick apart those individual parts. When you go to consume it, it's a slurry, it's a solution. Soil's the same. So our soil solution, when we water with liquid fertilizer, organic or otherwise, the uptake is much greater for that nutrient because the plant has access to the soil solution rather than the soil, if that makes sense. So when we saw a liquid form of silicone introduced, we seem to see better results. Now the forms you can use is potassium silicate, magnesium silicate, calcium silicate, 
I'm sure there's other silicates out there, but those I think were the main three. I now don't quote me. I'll maybe put them here if I find any extras, but those are kind of like the main forms of silicate that you can find. Now, silicates or silica come in many different formats in which that they are introduced to the soil through conventional or organic forms. They're not, by the way, they're not found in compost. They're not found in organic materials. Organic materials are very low in silica, typically speaking, just a heads up, because if the plant can't uptake the 30% in the soil, it sure as heck isn't gonna end up in the upper biomass you're putting in your compost. So anyone who's doing like the above ground compost, no dig setups, if your plant roots aren't getting to the soil beneath, it, they're probably suffering from silica depletion because compost just, it's not gonna have it. So that is one thing for sure. Now, the form that a plant takes up is salicylic acid or monosalicylic acid. You don't have to worry about that because it doesn't matter if you purchase the actual bioavailable form. Your little bugs in your soil are gonna do all the work for your silicates that you're gonna apply digest them, do what they need to do to make it into an available form for the plant. So that part doesn't really matter. Regardless, we need to look at what the studies have shown. So people who have done this on a large scale. Now, unfortunately, and this happens with all my videos where I'm referencing scientific journals, a lot of their research and the weight is placed on cash crops. So crops we know feed people and bring in money. They're not going to do this research on house plants. They're not going to do this research on your common garden variety, whatever. They're going to do it on big agricultural fields. So the most common plant I saw this studied on was canola. And the reason for that is because canola, if you did not know, is a big cash crop. It is such a big cash crop that people, farmers, will actually plant canola over and over and over and over and over again on the same field. They don't crop rotate it because it brings in so much money. So there's a problem in North America. It is something called club root. And all of the plant and soil nerds out there, scientists are trying to figure out how the heck to prevent this club root because farmers are refusing, in some cases, to properly crop rotate to prevent the spread of club root. Meaning they will plant canola on the same field and then the problem, club root, exponentially gets worse as you plant the same plant that the club root thrives on. See how that's a problem? That's a problem. So we try to study how to prevent club root if we can't crop rotate. And one of the ways that they saw a 46% reduction of club root disease is through the addition of silica. Kind of cool. So that is a very firm study showing us that, you know what, there might be something to this. However, the reason why people are so on the fence as to whether or not it works is because we don't fully understand the mechanism in which this uh, uptake matters or changes things. Now, most other studies I looked at actually showed some really cool stuff. Silica, when added in excess and now more bioavailable to the plant, actually had some very unique properties. And one of which was increase in nutrient uptake. So this increase in nutrient uptake, um, if you did not know, when we do plant studies, we can qualitatively look at something and we can say that patch of plants looks a heck of a lot bigger. Or we can say that patch of plants looks a heck of a lot smaller, for example. But that doesn't mean much because there's so many different factors that can ultimately affect what a plant's makeup does look like. So what we do then is we cut the plants off at the base, we dry them, we dry that plant material out, we grind that plant material down and we actually test the plant biomass. And what we found when silica was added to our plants is that there was a higher level of pretty much every macro and micronutrient in the plant biomass, meaning that that extra silica not only was taken up, but it actually affected how other nutrients were uptaken. So that is kind of interesting. This could mean that silica, while it deposits between the cuticle and the intercellular layer to give kind of a buffer against disease or pests or whatever the case is, it also may help with other met metabolic processes, if you will, within the plant uh, to help prevent against different things. So for example, we have spoke about this before, but calcium, when we go to cut a plant or prune a plant or a thrip 
goes and does its duty on a plant, we see a mass movement of calcium into the infected site or the, the site that has been damaged. And this is a protection mechanism for the plant. So if we have increased levels of calcium in our plant because of silica uptake, do we have a better response even to potential outside factors that harm or affect our plant? The answer is probably yes. This hasn't been you know, blind studied or replicated or done in mass because there just isn't a whole lot of interest to it. So we can't say with any definitive answer as to, you know, whether or not this is a big deal or, you know, life changing or if silica should move from beneficial to essential. But what we could say is if you wanted to spend your money on a silica fertilizer and it was a liquid form, magnesium silicate, calcium silicate, or potassium silicate, you could, and you may want to. If I had a choice between which one I would go for, I'd go through the calcium silicate model is where I would lean towards if I had a choice. I'm interested to try this, uh, the calcium silicate in particular, because one of the, and again, when I say study, this was more of a trial. This one in particular is more of a trial, but I saw a trial run of a plant in potting soil in a container that showed resistance to powdery mildew exposure. It was a pumpkin plant in particular. Again, trial, not study, very, two very different things. Uh, study is much more uh, conclusive and thorough and etc and so forth. A trial is intriguing. A trial is something where you're like, hmm, I want to, should we look at this more? Because that was, that was weird. This trial that I looked at is intriguing to me. I do have powdery mildew problems in my yard. I, powdery mildew is one of those things where if you got it, good luck getting rid of it is the, kind of the motto. Preventing or pushing it back as far in the season as possible is mostly the answer. But regardless, I'd be interested in trying this, particularly in the one bed that I know that it's it's a pretty big issue. I'd be interested in giving this a shot. So does this get my stamp of approval, approval science wise? You know, I would give it a shot. I would give it a shot, particularly if we're doing potting soil, guys, in particular, if you're doing a DIY potting soil. Um, if you're doing a potting soil and you know everything pH wise is in check and that sort of thing, I would encourage you to actually give the sil calcium silicate is the one that's getting the most check of approval for me based on what I saw. Um, calcium silicate in particular, liquid. I would be interested. I, you could you could do this. I would be I would say you know what, if I wanted any of the hacks for you to try, whether it was algae or phytoplankton or whatever the case, I would say yes to this one. I think it would be worth it. Houseplant wise, most definitely, if you're really struggling with uh, disease or pests, something to totally give it a shot. It's not going to increase. Like it's not going to put on a mass amount of biomass. You're not going to get a bigger plant. You're just gonna help that plant it, with its current growth levels succeed. So yeah, silica, check it for approval, give it a shot. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys next time and like, subscribe, comment down below if you've tried silica and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.